Hello, welcome back to Apex Math. We have been working on our division facts, and this lesson is Lesson 5, and we will be talking about some new patterns and some special facts today. So let's start with a pattern where we have a number divided by itself. Anytime we have a number divided by itself, the answer is always 1. So any number divided by itself, the answer is 1. So that's just a pattern to see. Very easy. Um, remember that division always works. Um, multiplication work backwards. And we know 1 times 9 equals 9. 1 times 3 equals 3. And 1 times 5 equals 5. So you can see how this makes sense with the fact that the multiplication fact is just the easy ones fact backwards. All right, so now let's talk about our 8s. When we did times 8, we learned the rule double, double, double. So if we had 8 times 3, we would circle the 8, since that was our rule, and the action would be on the 3. So we would take the 3, and we would double it, and we'd get 6. And then we double the 6, and we'd get 12. And we need one more double to get 24. So 8 times 3 is 24. So I think you could probably figure out based on our past lessons, what we're going to do if we want to divide by 8. Well, we're going to cut in half, cut in half, and cut in half again. So we're going to do three halves. So let's say we have 48 divided by 8. So we're going to be dividing by 8, so that's the rule we're going to use. The action is going to be on the 48. So we're going to take 48, we're going to cut it in half. So you're going to cut the 4 in half and we get a 2, and we're going to cut the 8 in half and we get a 4. So we've done it once now. We're going to cut it in half again. We cut the 2 in half, we get a 1. We cut the 4 in half, we get a 2. And we have to do it one more time. And we can't use that same simple approach for 12 because it has an odd number. But we know that half of 12 is 6. So our answer is 6. And again, we can always check it backwards. We know that 6 times 8 is 48. The even 6 trick works. Notice that the if we use the even 6 trick, We'd be using the 6 rule. The action would be on the 8. This is going backwards now. So we'd have half the 8, and then we'd write it. So you can see that even 6 trick pattern here, the half and the full number 48. All right, so let's try another one. Let's do um, 32 divided by 8. 32 is that one. You have to know the song. Remember that half of 32 is what? Remember our song. 2 and 2 is 4. 4 and 4 is 8. 8 and 8 is 16. 16 and 16 is? Yes, 32. So, cutting it backwards, 32 Taking one half of it gets us to 16. 
Taking half of 16 is 8, and we need one more half, and that gets us to 4. So 32 divided by 8 is 4. And again, right now at the beginning, if students need to write this out to keep them organized, to keep track of how many times they do one half, by all means, let them write it out. Eventually, they'll be able to do it in their head, um, but initially, anything that they need to write out, especially if it's organizational, um, it's a great uh, opportunity to get used to organizing math for uh, the future. All right, so that's our um, dividing by eight. The next one, well, let's take a look at this one for a second. 56 divided by seven equals what? If you remember correctly, when we did our multiplication facts, we learned a trick called the five, six, seven, eight trick. And that's if you count an order from five through eight, you can write five, six, and then in the middle here, stick an equal sign, and then in between the seven and eight, stick a time sign. So 56 is equal to seven times eight. And the other one that I don't believe I showed you is that the numbers that precede that, one, two, three, four, also work the same way. So one, two is equal to three times four. So for this one, if you see five, six, seven, you know your missing number here is eight. So if you can also remember that if you have 56 divided by eight, and you're trying to figure out what that missing number is, it's going to be way too difficult to try to cut 56 in half because that's not an easy number to cut in half. So we wouldn't be able to use our half-half rule, half-half-half rule on the 56 number. But if you can remember 7 or 5, 6, it goes out of order here, but 7, 8 is still that same fact there. Um, it can help you remember that 56 divided by 8 is equal to 7. It's a little bit easier to see on this one because it all goes in order here, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the same thing, of course, 12 is equal to 3 times 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So on your paper, when you see those um, uh, 12 divided by 3, or 56 divided by 7, look for those two facts with that special pattern where all you have to do is count in the right order. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So be on the watch out for those two patterns. All right. Uh, the next one we are going to talk about is the five pattern. Now we've already talked about dividing by five, but we haven't talked about the five pattern. The five pattern is when you get an answer equal to five. And that's any time that the number you're dividing by, that two digit number here, where it ends in either a zero or it ends in a five. So this can be any number here, and this can be any number here. And you divide by something. Again, doesn't matter what this is. But the answer is going to be five because you're going to notice that the number you're dividing by ends in a zero or five. So that's going to clue you in that five 
very well could be the answer to the problem. Just like when we looked for the nine pattern, when we looked for these, did these two digits add to be nine? Um, if the two digits there and one of them ends in a zero or a five, we're going to look to see if the answer is five. And if you think about it, when you count by fives, you count five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. All those numbers end in either a zero or a five. So anytime you're in that five family, you're going to be with a number that either ends in a five or a zero. So let's try a couple problems that look like that. Let's say we have 40 divided by eight. Now there's two ways we could approach this pattern. One could be to say, hey, look, we're dividing by eight, and this is actually an easy number to do the cut in half three times. But we can also immediately notice that this ends in a zero. So we can ask ourselves, well, is five the answer? And immediately check that and see if it's right. Is eight times five 40? Yes, it is. So I'm done. The other way would have been to divide by eight. So we would have taken 40. We would have cut it in half and gotten 20. Cut in half again, would have gotten 10. Cut in half again, and you can see we get to five. So either way would have worked for that one. But let's take 35 divided by seven. We don't have a divided by seven rule. And this doesn't make a nice number pattern. There's no five, six, seven, eight, or anything like that that we see. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to look and we're going to say, does three plus five equal nine? No. The nine trick doesn't work. The nine pattern. So does it end in a zero or a five? Yes, it does. So, therefore, one possible answer is it could be 5. And then I always check. 7 times 5 equals 35. Yes, it does. Let's do another one. Um, let's see. 15 divided by 3. Again, I do not have any rules for dividing by three. So if I don't have a rule, I check my patterns. One plus five, does that equal nine? No. So nine isn't going to help me. But does it end in a five or zero? Yes, it does. So Five could be a solution. Check it. Is three times five 15? Yes, it is. So five is the answer. So anytime you get one of those things to divide by, and it's not a rule that you know, you're going to check your two patterns. You're going to add the digits and see if it's nine, or you're going to see if it ends in a zero or five. And you're going to then see does 9 or 5 work? And that will get you through a whole bunch of problems. All right. That's as far as we are going to go in today's session. That really only leaves us with a few problems that, have not, that we have not worked on. So I'm going to write down the ones that we have not worked on. So you can ask your student, and you should mix up their division facts, all problems except these. We have not worked on 6 divided by 3, 9 divided by 3, 18 divided by 3, 21 divided by 3, 24 divided by 3, so most of the divided by 3 family, 42 divided by 6, 42 divided by 7, 18 divided by 6, 14 divided by 7, 
21 divided by 7, 28 divided by 7, 64 divided by 8, and we did 56 divided by 7, and we briefly talked about how it still works, but sort of out of order for 56 divided by 8. So you can put that one on there, but know that it will probably be a little bit tricky for your students if you put that one on there. Um, but I believe every other multiplication fact um, we have completed. So if you go through your cards and you pull out these problems in a um, deck, your child should be able to solve all the uh, division facts with the exception of these problems. And so that's what you should work on. They should have mastery of that before they move on to our next lesson. So thank you so much for visiting us at Apex Math. We really do hope that we make math easier for you and your student. And have a great day.